Last week, we learned about the birth of Moses and how he was saved in the river by the Egyptian princess. Well, Mo Moses grew up to be a prince in Egypt, but when he saw an Egyptian mistreating one of the Hebrew slaves, he killed the Egyptian and he fled into the desert of Midian because the Pharaoh wanted to kill him. So Moses spent 40 years in the desert with Jethro, his father-in-law. One day, he saw a burning bush, and God spoke to him, giving him a mission to go, to go on. He wanted him to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let his people go. Moses was reluctant, so God told him his brother Aaron would also go with him. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. And your brother Aaron is to say everything that I command you, and tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of Egypt. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I will multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. And I will lay my hand on Egypt with mighty acts of judgment, and I will bring out my people, the Israelites. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. But as the Lord had said, the Pharaoh was stubborn. So to show God's power, Moses threw his staff on the ground and it became a snake. Pharaoh's magicians did the same with their staffs and their staffs also became snakes. But Moses' snake swallowed up theirs. Then Moses turned the water of the Nile River into blood. But Pharaoh's magicians were able to replicate this as well. Despite the waters turning to blood, Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He would not let the Israelites go. So the next day, Moses and Aaron warned Pharaoh that if he didn't let the Hebrews go, Egypt would be overrun by frogs. Pharaoh didn't listen, and soon frogs were everywhere. They were in the fields, the houses, kitchens, and even in their beds. Frogs were jumping out of their cupboards and squatting in their ovens. Pharaoh even had he, Pharaoh had enough of this hopping madness, and he summoned Moses and Aaron. And he said, pray to the Lord your God to take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will let your people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord as you requested. Pharaoh pleaded with Moses. Moses replied, I can pray to the Lord to take the frogs away, but before I do that, tell me when you would like the frogs to be gone from your land and your houses and your beds. Just tell me when you want them to be gone, and I'll pray. And the, the only frogs then will that the, the only frogs then that will remain will be in the Nile River. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said. It was a surprise that the Pharaoh said tomorrow. Pharaoh would have, could have said now and the frogs would be gone from their houses and their kitchens and their beds, but now they were going to be there for another night. Moses answered, I will do as you say, so that you may know that there was no one like the Lord your God. The frogs will leave you in your houses tomorrow. After Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs, and the Lord did what Moses had asked. The next day, the frogs died in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields. There were so many frogs, they were piled up into heaps, and the land reeked of them. But when Pharaoh saw that there was, that there was relief and no more frogs, he hardened his heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. After the frogs, God sent more plagues to show his power. First, he sent lice that covered people and the animals. Then, swarms of flies filled the land, buzzing everywhere and causing great distress. Next, a terrible disease struck all of the Egyptian livestock, and many of the cows died. After that, painful boils and many people um, that appeared on the skin of many Egyptians. Uh, then came a mighty hailstorm from the sky that destroyed the crops and everything left outside. After that, locusts came, devouring every green th thing in the field. Then 
darkness covered Egypt for three days. It was so dark that the Egyptians couldn't see each other or leave their homes. Even though these plagues worried Pharaoh, his heart was hard. And when God removed each plague, Pharaoh refused to let the Hebrews go. In the land of Goshen, where the Hebrews lived, they were spared from all of the plagues. They had no frogs, no lice, no flies, no animals that got sick, no hail. And when it was dark in the entire land of Egypt, the Hebrews still in the land of, Egypt, in the land of Goshen still had light. Finally, God had had enough. He told Moses to prepare the people. Each family was to take a lamb and put some of the blood on uh, the lamb on their doorposts, on the top and each side. That night, God sent the angel of death who passed over the Hebrew houses when he saw the blood. The next morning, there was wailing throughout Egypt because the firstborn son had died in every house except of the houses of the Hebrews where the blood had been applied. Pharaoh was convinced and told Moses to take the Hebrews and leave Egypt immediately. This event is called the Passover because the angel of death passed over the homes of the people of Israel that had the blood applied. Soon after Moses and the Hebrews left, Pharaoh changed his mind again and sent soldiers to bring them back. When the Hebrews saw the soldiers coming, they were afraid. But Moses prayed, and God told him to touch the water of the Red Sea with his staff. The water of the Red Sea parted, and the Hebrews walked across the sea on dry land. When the Egyptians followed, Moses held up his staff again, and the waters rushed back together, drowning all of the soldiers. Moses and the Hebrews were free from Egypt, but now they were in the desert, and they needed water, food, and a place to live in the desert. This was all part of God's plan for the people. God would take care of them, just as he had saved them from Egypt. I hope you like the story today about Moses, the Exodus, and Egypt.